Hi, David Wenk here. I had a question come in from my good friend Steve Cutter regarding plantar fasciitis. The hands and the feet are absolutely essential to function. Think about it. That's what interacts with the world around you. It's your hands and your feet. Weck Method addresses hands and feet as a fundamental component to moving better. All right, so here we have the bone structure of the feet, obviously. I want to just tilt them a little bit so we can see the bottom, Steve. And now let's put the fascial layer in. The fascial layer, this is the connective tissue. And just give me a little bit of sweep, Steve, so people can see it. From the heel all the way to the toes, you can see you have this layer of connective tissue. That is the plantar fascia. That's what we're talking about when we talk about plantar fasciitis. So let's click in the muscles, Steve. So all the muscles are going to come in underneath that. So this is more superficial. The skin's right above that. Everything's very connected, but we want it to slide freely. So we're going to come down and take all the, everything away, Steve everything away. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline for you the fundamental way to train the feet. And it has to be this way because you need to do the foundation before you do the second story and then upward on the body. So you have three arches in the feet. We have the lateral arch and that lateral arch is on the outside. That's near the pinky toe. And you can see, hold it right here, Steve, hold it right here. These two toes, the pinky toe and the next toe, they have a more direct connection with the calcaneus, that's the heel bone. So this is the inside view of the lateral arch, that's the lateral arch. See how that arch is a biggie. There's a lot of meat, a lot of muscle that goes in there. These toes, the big toe and then the second and third toe here, they come in and they have a more direct attachment to the talus, which rides atop the heel bone, the calcaneus. So we're going to talk about that arch last, that's our medial. So we have first and foremost is the lateral arch and I'm in a minute I'm going to show you how to strategy how to do this. Next we have the transverse arch. That's the one that bridges all the five toes and that's transverse. You can bring it back Steve. Yeah right here, that's perfect. That's the transverse arch, so that's number two. And then we have the medial arch. Just give it a little tilt. This is the big arch. Now when people talk about the arch of a foot, they're talking about the medial arch, but they don't know that there's actually three and that the medial comes last because that's the second story. And without the foundation, you fortify the, the, the medial and you let it release. And now you don't have a foundation. You actually get more collapse is a possible outcome. All right. So now we're going to go to the actual application for how we're going to do this. All right. Come on over here. Okay. So what you're going to need is you're going to need... Anything that you can roll on, a ball, a, a broom handle, a stick, a rolling pin, anything. And we're going to start with the lateral arch right down here. Notice what I'm doing is I'm actively spreading my toes. I want my toes to be as spread as they possibly can be. So I'm really extending the musculature and I'm pressing through the lateral arch. And I'm just getting the meat of that thing. And my guideline is what I call delicious discomfort. You don't want to go to pain to the point where you're, where you're reacting in a defensive mechanism where you're like pulling out of it. You want to find that boundary and you want to make it hurt so good. Don't cross the pain threshold. So that's your lateral arch and you can take it all the way up and spread the toes. Eventually, you can see how when I start to put weight on that surface, my little toe comes down. As you strengthen it, that's going to get stronger and stronger and you're going to be able to put more weight into that to the point where it no longer even hurts. You can dance the jig on there. All right, so now we're going to go to transverse arch, this portion right here. And what we're going to do is this is where you'll get a lot of pain if you have plantar fasciitis. Just roll the middle. And really what you want to focus on is, again, that smooth sliding compression of that tissue. You're, tra you're, you're changing the tissue density you're flushing toxic waste, and you're refreshing it. This one, will, uh, this one may hurt a lot, so you're going to have to back off on that one. Now we go to the medial arch. The medial arch can be done this way here. I'm actually, I'm actually launching another product very soon that perfectly targets the feet because they are so important, but you just have to improvise and use that and get the medial. See how I'm spreading my toes? Now, look at what I'll do on a ball. 
It could be a lacrosse ball. It could be a tennis ball. It can be a river rock. It doesn't matter what it is. You just have to do it. And just find that delicious discomfort and make it go away. Okay. Now, this is how I originally fixed my feet. It was I just did this simple task. I stood on a BOSU balance trainer, bare feet, and I did it a lot. You can watch TV with it. You can just hang out and talk on the phone if you've got it in your office or whatever. But just standing on here, it's impossible to stand still. The, the bones of the feet will be articulating. You'll be strengthening them. And this is more like walking in sand. This is like walking on rocks. The reason why we get plantar fasciitis is because our feet are weak. We walk on pristinely flat surfaces everywhere we go. And we pad our feet and cushion them. So you get the same impetus, the same, the same, the same. Your feet get weak, and now you have problems. So releasing the feet is absolutely essential to everything up the chain in your body. And this is the way that WEC Method teaches you to do it. Last point, last point, and then I'll let you go do this, is you don't have enough hours in the day to single out my foot training time. If you single it out and say, I'm training my feet from this time to this time, uh-uh. You will eventually not do it. This is the reality. What you have to do is you have to kill two birds with one stone. Put this stuff underneath your desk, take off your shoes, and roll while you work. Do it when you talk on the phone. Do it when you watch television. This way, you will actually do it. The time necessary to do this is a long process, and it takes, it, it takes persistence, and it takes time. If you say, I'm going to do it for 10 minutes, you'll end up not doing it, and you'll go nowhere. So do it when you're doing other things. Make sure you continually do it, and that's your solution.